The tech landscape has changed so much in just the last five years, and to be frank, the amount of change has been scary to witness and be a part of. We've seen massive job growth, mass layoffs, the rise of AI, and a current trend towards more senior engineers. If you're trying to get into the tech and software engineering fields, hopefully I can help you out. I know how terrifying it can be, especially when you see all the expected years of experience in every job description you come across. In this video, I'll go over the current state of tech, whether I think it's too late to work in tech, and if you stick around to the end, I'll give three strategies to navigate this new tech landscape that not only help me land a software engineering job, but also get two promotions and raises within a year. So the tech space really boomed during the pandemic. After the stock market initially crashed, there was this huge recovery that saw all-time high after all-time high in every tech stock. And as a result, these companies felt like they were invincible. They started overhiring. They thought that there was just this endless growth to be had, and they were trying as hard as possible to just gain as much revenue during this time as possible. So during this time, you saw more people than ever trying to become software engineers. And at this point, I don't even mean just people graduating with computer science degrees from university. There were people who had just done a month long boot camp or multiple month long boot camps where they learned to code and immediately gained jobs right afterwards. And of course, since you're watching this video, that growth was not sustainable and the market became oversaturated. And now competition for software engineers is as fierce as it's ever been. A lot of people have asked me why I think things turned out the way that they did. And I think a lot of it is because of investor pressures. I think that there's this weird pressure for a lot of these tech companies to just continue to grow, grow, grow because of just the landscape of stocks in general. When you invest into a company, you hope that your stock gains value over time. And the only way this happens is if the company either increases their revenue, increases their profits, or in general shows that they can have other avenues to grow in the future. And this creates this weird new norm where you can look at a company like Meta that owns the social media platform Facebook. Facebook right now has over three and a half billion users, if I'm not mistaken. That's close to half of the planet's population in Facebook users. Most people, and by every metric, that's a resounding success. But for Meta, they still need to show their investors that they can grow beyond a social media brand. That's why they buy companies like Oculus or WhatsApp or Messenger or Instagram to show that they can delve into these other areas and have other markets for actual profitability. It's not enough to dominate in an industry anymore. You need to always show more room for growth beyond that. And so when we got to this time where revenue began to decrease from those unsustainable marks that we saw during the pandemic, the only way to increase their profit margin was to have mass layoffs. Because for these tech companies, outside of the costs of just servers and office buildings, the biggest cost for these companies is the software engineering or the talent. By now, if you're watching this video, you probably already know that these tech salaries are gigantic. They have a lot of perks. So firing a bunch of people saves a company a ton of money. And because of the decreased revenue from the pandemic, tech has become much more risk averse. There are very few entry level jobs now and less interns overall. And this means that they're only hiring senior engineers and above. And for the managers, this means that they're trying to only hire managers who can also contribute to code bases and contribute technically as well. And because of what I mentioned, I think this makes sense. Companies want to control the areas that they can control. And this means doing more with less personnel. There's also been this overarching AI effect. And I don't think it's in the areas that you expect. I think people have this perception of AI that it's going to be this ultimate job killer that's just going to take over everybody's jobs. And because software engineering is so technical in nature and because it's really just putting idea to code, there are these natural avenues where AI can feasibly take the place of an engineer. And for at least right now, I think software engineering jobs are very safe because you have to put together these distributed systems that AI can enable. But engineers are becoming much more productive because of AI. One engineer who utilizes AI can do the work of multiple engineers in the past. So less engineers are needed to do the same level of work as before. And because these individual engineers and innovators are able to do even more than before, I think the expectation in larger companies has risen and the, out the expected output of each engineer 
is only growing day by day, which we can predict what ultimately happens to the job market because of that. But I think in general, companies will be able to do more because engineers will be able to do more. And you can either go the avenue of putting out an even more complicated product that requires that added productivity, or you can keep the same level of product and just reduce the engineering workforce. And tangentially to the larger companies, when we look at indie startups or startups that are just companies of one or two people that are self-funded, we've seen a big growth of those since the pandemic as well. With AI and that added efficiency, I can now spin up a whole company that runs end-to-end, -end, that supports hundreds of thousands of users, and I can make millions of dollars a year myself. Theoretically, there are plenty of people who have done it right now that are doing it. And and I think a lot of this is because of AI. State-of-the-art tech isn't gate kept anymore. Anyone can access most of the tech that we see today. If Microsoft has access to a certain thing, we have access to pretty close to the best version of that as well. With things like OpenAI's ChatGPT or Google Gemini, for example. And these top engineers who properly utilize AI are able to stand out even more, only further separating them from the rest of the pack. Okay, so now we get to the question that is the title of this video. Is it too late to work in tech? I think it is too late to do just quick coding boot camps and expect to land a job as a software engineer right after. I also think it's too late to just get a computer science bachelor's or master's degree and expect a job on the other side of it. It has gotten way too competitive to just expect that. But I think it is not too late to work in tech. But because of how saturated the industry is, it is much harder to stand out and make a name for yourself. And it is much harder, ultimately, to land a job. So I'll finish this video off with the three strategies that I think will help you in this new state of tech. If you've made it to this part of the video, you probably don't have the five to 10 years of requisite experience for most job postings in the tech space. To tech companies, years of experience show them how much you've seen and had to deal with. They want to ensure that they don't have to spend any extra resources teaching you things that you would have learned on the job otherwise. So if you don't have the sheer number of years that you're hoping for, you need to show that you're an experienced builder. The advice that I give to my personal mentees that sign up for my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program is to build apps end to end. This means set up a server in the cloud, create API endpoints, design and implement a front end, and ultimately deploy a production version of your app onto some domain. Through this process, you'll not only gain a ton of experience very fast, but you'll equip yourself with concrete examples that you can point to when describing the systems you've built. You'll be able to speak the language of software engineering and not just a computer science graduate. So my first strategy to standing out in tech is to just start building deployed cloud distributed applications. When everyone was stuck at home, everyone learned how to code. People are learning to code as early as ever, so soft skills become the main way candidates and employees can stand out. Yes, it's important to network and get your name out there, but networking means nothing unless you're able to make a good impression. I'm a member of a luxury gym, and a lot of the basketball guys I play with are entrepreneurs. There have been some millionaires who have directly told me that they would never work with this specific player A or this specific player B in any business setting because of the way that they play basketball. And they didn't mean the way that they dribble or shoot. They meant the ways that they'd be quick to argue with any call or the ways that they interacted with their teammates. I think what has progressed me so quickly through my career has been the way that I carry empathy into everything that I do. In everyday life, doing simple things like greeting everyone you know when you walk into a room, introducing yourself to people who you don't know and treating everyone with respect can take you a long way in life. When everyone has the requisite skills for a job, the interviewers will always hire the person that they just like the most personally since they know that they are going to be your future coworker. You have to understand that everything in life is an exchange of value. We understand this when we pay for a movie or a sports ticket, when we pay our rent or when we buy a new car. There's a certain expectation that comes with these purchases. With respect to jobs, employers expect you to perform your job description in exchange exchange for the salary and benefits that they provide. The whole interview process is analogous to you going to a car dealership and test driving a car. You can be in the market for a nice car, but you're going to shop around from dealer to dealer until you find the car that's right for you. If you have any reservations at all, you're probably going to look elsewhere at that point in time. As a potential employee, that's why it's important to really understand the role that you're looking to fill in a certain company and make sure that you leave them with no reservations at the end of your interview. And if you do land a job and are expecting some sort of raise or promotion, Again, think about the value exchange. 
Regardless of the years you've worked at a certain company, are you providing more value than your job description describes? If so, you have grounds for a promotion or a raise. If you've been the single best person at your job for five years, but stay within the confines of your job description, there aren't any grounds for more pay. So that's all I had to talk about today. If you found this video interesting, you'll probably like this video where I discuss whether or not I regret switching from aerospace to software engineering. As always, stay positive, stay inspired, and I'll see you in the next one.